Chapter 5 The Robot Gravesite Those otters were now hiding behind a rock. Their round heads nervously poked up, and they watched as a sparkling monster emerged from the crate. The monster slowly turned her head as she scanned the coastline. Her head turned and turned all the way around, and it didn't stop turning until she was looking right at the otters. Hello, otters. My name is Roz. The robot's voice was simply too much for the skittish creatures. The biggest otter squeaked, and the whole gang suddenly took off. They galloped back across the robot gravesite, flopped into the ocean, and raced through the waves just as fast as they could. Roz watched the otters go, but her eyes lingered on the sparkling objects that littered the shore. The objects looked strangely familiar. The robot swung her left leg forward, then her right, and just like that, she was taking her very first steps. She stomped away from her crate and over the rocks and through the gravesite until she was standing above a broken robot body. She leaned in and noticed the word Razum lightly etched on the torso. She noticed the same word on all the torsos, including her own. Roz continued exploring the gravesite until a playful little ocean wave washed over the rocks. She automatically stepped away from it. Then a bigger wave sloshed toward her, and she stepped away again. And then a gigantic wave crashed over the rocks and engulfed the entire gravesite. Heavy water pounded against her body and knocked her to the ground, and her damage sensors flared for the first time. A moment later, the wave was gone, and Roz lay there, dripping and dented and surrounded by dead robots. Ross could feel her survival instincts, the part of her computer brain that made her want to avoid danger and take care of herself, so she could continue functioning properly. Her instincts were urging her to move away from the ocean. She carefully got to her feet and saw that, high above the shore, the land was bursting with trees and grasses and flowers. It looked lush and safe up there. It looked like a much better place for our robot. She had just one problem. To get up there, she would have to climb the sea cliffs. Chapter 6. The Climb Crack! Thunk! Clang! Roz was having a little trouble climbing the cliffs. She had a new dent on her rear and a long scrape down her side. And she was just about to get another ding when a crab scuttled out from under a piece of driftwood. The crab looked up and immediately showed off his giant claws. Everyone was afraid of his claws, but not the robot. She just looked down and introduced herself. Hello, crab. My name is Roz. After a brief standoff, the crab cautiously backed away, and that's when Roz noticed how easily he moved over the rocks. With his wide stance and his grippy feet, the crab could crawl up and down any rock face. So Roz decided to try out his climbing technique. She spread her arms wide and clamped each of her hands onto the cliffside. She jammed one foot into a crack and lifted her other foot onto a narrow ledge. And just like that, she was climbing. Roz moved awkwardly at first. A chunk of rock crumbled in her hand. She had trouble finding footholds. But as she climbed higher and higher, she started to get the hang of it. Seagulls squawked from their cliff nest and soared away when the robot came too close. But Roz paid them no mind. She was focused only on getting to the top. Up and up and up she went, methodically climbing past nests and ledges and tiny trees rooted in the cracks. And before long, our robot felt the soft soil of the island beneath her feet. Chapter 7. The Wilderness Animal sounds filled the forest. Chirps and wing beats and rustlings in the underbush. And then from the sea cliffs there came new sounds. Heavy, crunching footsteps. The forest animals fell silent. And from their hiding places they watched as a sparkling monster stomped past. But the forest was not a comfortable place for Roz. Jagged rocks and fallen trees and tangled underbrush made it difficult for her to walk. She stumbled along and struggling to keep her balance until her foot snagged and she toppled over like a piece of lumber. It wasn't a bad fall. No dings, no dents, 
just dirt. But Roz was programmed to keep herself in good working order, and once she was back on her feet, she immediately began cleaning herself off. Her hands darted around her body, quickly brushing and picking off every speck of dirt. Only when the robot was sparkly again did she continue through the forest. Ross stumbled until she found a patch of ground that was flat and open and carpeted with pine needles. It seemed like a safe place, and safety was all the robot really wanted. So she stood there, motionless, all perfect lines and angles set against the irregular, irregular shapes of the wilderness. Chapter 8. The Pine Cones If you stand in a forest long enough, eventually something will fall on you and Roz had been st standing in the forest long enough. A gentle wind whispered through the treetops, and then, thunk! A pine cone bounced off her head. The robot looked down and watched the pine cone roll to a stop. It seemed harmless, so Roz went right back to doing nothing. A few hours later, a gust of wind rushed through the treetops, and then, thunk! The robot looked down as another pine cone rolled away. And then a few hours after that, a howling wind tore through the treetops. It bent trunks and shook branches, and then, thunk, thunk, thunk! Pine cones began raining down. Thunk, thunk! Roz felt something like annoyance. Thunk! She quickly scanned the area for somewhere safe from pine cones. And she spotted the perfect place when she looked up at the huge, rocky shape that towered above the forest.